He ended his ex-wife's life because she wouldn't let him see their son. But at the trial, he attacked his mother-in-law, the victim's mother, in the most aberrant way possible. She hated you. <laughs> You're a loser. You know, to, to do that to your child is, is pretty sick and disgusting. So, talking about being a good parent... No one understood what the killer meant. It could have all been prevented. All you had to do is let me see my kid. Now you're never going to see her again. However, the sequence of events made a clear case against him. Minutes after killing Therese Ann Lynch and wounding a police officer, Randall Moore gave the motives for his crime to 9-11. I didn't want to do any of this. Okay. But I'm telling you, all I wanted was my son. I just wanted to see my seven-month-old baby. That's all I cared about. The horrific crime consisted of kidnap, abuse, and murder. And all because Therese Ann had filed a restraining order against Moore because of the constant violence she was experiencing. The case attracted widespread attention, but the defendant's attitude during the trial would generate even more revulsion and astonishment. The to my daughter, Teresa Ann Marie Lynch, was evil, hateful, and despicable. You are now dead and rotting and repulsive to me. Read the journal she wrote, she hated you. Thank you, Judge She hated you. <laughs> You're a loser. His sordid strategy was to bring down the victim's mother. That's when he decided to reveal what Therese Ann had supposedly written about her in her personal diaries. You know, as Therese Ann left, I, I started thinking about why she had left and, and what could have been done differently during this whole process. And then I started going through some totes of hers. I found a tote that had miscellaneous journals and... I mean, I, I went through every item. I read every single page of every journal that she had ever written since she was a little girl. And uh, the most shocking thing that I came across, and I even shared this with my mom and my sister Misty here, they both read the letter, is a letter that Teresa Ann wrote to her mom when she was a little girl. And uh, it was addressed to her mom, it was sealed, but it was never stamped, never mailed off. And uh, it talks about the sexual abuse that she endured at the hands of her father, Tim Lynch, and how she hated him for it. And these are quotes from the letter. It says, I was young, only a little girl, so innocent and pure. He is evil and disgusting, and then talks about it. And then she talks about what he actually did to her, and this is over quite a period of time. That has got to be the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not saying what I did was any better, but, you know, and then... In a very cold way, he was trying to rid himself of any kind of guilt. ...in her journals about how her mom just walked out on her dad with no forewarning, no nothing, and how it ruined her life, and she hated her mom for that. And that's the reason she would never walk out on a relationship. Well, the day that Tree Sand died, me and her had a conversation. And Tree Sand, I told Tree, the first thing I told Tree Sand, I gave her the letter that I wrote for her that talks about the postpartum depression and the things that was going on in her head that, that I didn't understand as a man because I didn't know what postpartum was. I thought the reason my wife was bitchy and. His statement was truly repulsive. But the thing that really tested the patience of the judge and everybody present at the trial was what he said about his late ex-wife and victim. That, and I'll tell you point blank, I have not one ounce of remorse for Tree Sand's death. It could have all been prevented. All you had to do is let me see my kid. Now you're never going to see her again. That was the straw that broke the camel's back and caused the judge to give an unforgettable speech. And sometimes you just have to throw caution to the wind. And uh, if I do cross that line today, I'm willing to cross it and pay the consequences. Let me start off by saying if anything should burn in hell, it's not Teresa Ann's uh, yearbooks and her personal memorabilia. When you get to prison, there are two men you ought to look up because you have a lot in common. One of them I sentenced on May 3rd, 2010. He murdered his wife. She was divorcing him. He was lying in wait till she got out of work, then followed her on the freeway, pulled up beside her, put his uh, weapon out the window, shot her, killed her. Of course, the car rolled over and over for a while before it came to a stop. I sentenced him for murder on May 3rd, 2010. On September 30th, 2010, I sentenced a young man to murder. Now, he wasn't married to the woman he murdered. He was living with her. And uh, she was leaving him. He strangled her to death. You three have so much in common, I can't believe it. Yeah, shake your head, yeah, because you know you do. 
the lawyer couldn't stand what Randall Moore had said. His attempt to generate pity in the jury, as well as his ease in shaking off the blame for everything that had happened, had judged Novak at the end of his tether. I am really glad you had your right of elocution and you could say everything that you said because if anybody didn't know what a piece of work you were before you start talking, they know it now. The three of you that I'm talking, I've sentenced three people for murder in the last seven months. And when I say you all have a lot in common, you sure do. And it's been said before and you can't be said enough. You're cowards. You truly are cowards. You prey on women. They give you their love. They give you their trust. And you betray that. You betray it by physically and or mentally. Randall Moore would eventually be sentenced to three life sentences without the possibility of parole. The court doesn't allow me to punish you any more than I'm doing now. If I could, I would.